What I have here is a device called Maxwell's wheel. It's just a metal disc with a rod going through it. And at the ends of the rods is connected to two strings that's just connected to a base that holds the whole thing up. This is frequently used in classrooms to show the conversion between potential energy and kinetic energy. For example, I can wind up the string on these rods here. Get it all the way to the top. And then if I just let it go, you can see that it unravels but then it ravels back up and bounces almost to the same height that it started at. Now it'll bounce back and forth like this for a long time. So what's happening is the potential energy that it has to begin with gets converted into rotational energy. The interesting part comes from when we weigh it. When I got this, I initially put it on the scale to see the jerk or the amount of force that was applied. But watch this, I'm gonna do the same thing now where I wind up the wheel. I'm gonna hold it at the top. Now watch what happens when I release it. It says negative six grams. And it literally stays at negative six grams the entire time this is bobbing up and down. It'll kind of bounce around negative six grams, but on average it's at negative six grams. You can see it bouncing going around to negative five up to negative seven, but right around negative six grams is its home point. You can see that when I completely stop it, it's back at zero again. Yes, I was really confused and I thought, okay, maybe it's just the scale's kind of shaking, so it's kind of going all over the place. But you can see that if I shift it around or do anything, even get it swinging like this, you can see that it doesn't get to negative six grams. When I get this wiggling around, you can see that it doesn't come anywhere near this negative six gram range. It bounces between positive and negative because you're kind of shifting the weight all around, but it doesn't keep an average lower weight. But as soon as I get the spinning, even if I don't do it very high, let's just start it around this high. As soon as it starts spinning, it drops to this negative six grams again. We're registering less weight as long as this wheel is spinning. And I'm measuring the force in grams. This is gram force. We're not measuring the mass, we're measuring the force. So one gram on here is the force that one gram would put on the scale. So for some reason, when that wheel starts spinning, it's the equivalent of removing about this much mass from the wheel. That's a significant amount. That's around 1% of the mass of this wheel here. So I've zeroed this at zero grams now. Let's start this spinning. And sure enough, it doesn't weigh any less. So why is it that this wheel weighs less, but this one doesn't when it's spinning? So let's go back to some basic physics. We know that when something is accelerating downward, it actually weighs less. I can show this by standing on a scale and then letting myself fall. So I start to accelerate downward. Obviously my weight goes down. So when you accelerate downward, your weight decreases. So we can apply this to Maxwell's wheel like this. Let's say that I were to cut both of these strings here. We know that the second that I cut these strings, it's going to weigh less by the weight of this disc. Because this is accelerating downward now, the weight decreased by the entire weight of the disc. But then when it hits it's the bottom, it's going to weigh the same as it did before. But in the case of the Maxwell's disc, we didn't just snip the strings and let it free fall, but we actually let it slowly fall. So the acceleration downward was very slow. It was only being accelerated at a fraction of the percent that it would accelerate if you just let it fall. So because of the downward acceleration, the wheel weighs less as it's falling down. So that explains that as it's falling, it weighs less. But what about when it bounces back up? Well, surprisingly, even when it's rising back up, it's still being accelerated downward. Remember, acceleration is not the direction of the velocity. Acceleration is the thing that's making the velocity change. Now we know that the acceleration is still downward because even as this is moving upward, it's slowing down its velocity. So the velocity is slowing because the acceleration is pointing downward. So whether or not it's bobbing up or down, it's still always being accelerated downward. It's easiest to think about this in terms of a bouncing ball. So let's go back to our experiment where I snip both these strings and let's say that this is able to bounce. So when I initially snip the strings, you can see it goes down by 727 grams, the full weight of the disc. But as it falls and then hits the ground, it's going to increase in weight, but as it bounces back up, you'll see that it decreases by the entire weight again. 
So the only time we actually register the weight of it is when it's bouncing and hitting the bottom. Any time it's up in the air, you're not going to register the weight of the disc. So even if it's bouncing up and down, no matter what, you don't register the weight of it. As it hits the bottom, we should be able to measure a force that goes up and down as it bounces off the bottom. But the refresh rate of the scale isn't enough to measure that sharp force. So the more this approaches a regular free fall, the less weight we're going to register on here. So let's try to make it accelerate faster by having less wine so it can fall faster and have less rotational energy. So you can see we're down at like negative 20 grams now. Then when it finally stops, it says zero grams again. The reason I was able to get it to weigh less now is because I was able to get it to have more downward acceleration so that decreased the weight even more. And thanks for watching another episode. I hope you enjoyed it.